Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another edition of The Feeding Frenzy. I'm your host, Eric Wenzel. As always, The Feeding Frenzy is my take on what I found interesting or worth thinking about in the last week. We're going to start with worth listening. Today's episode is Courtney Dahlwalter on Mindset Secrets from the World's Best Ultra Runner from the Rich Roll Podcast. On my most recent podcast with Alec Eichert, we mentioned this conversation, and this is where he pulled the idea of the pain cave from. I wanted to take him on myself to listen to this episode because I had listened to Courtney back on Joe Rogan's podcast a couple of years ago. And so I just wanted to hear what she had to say more recently since she kind of exploded onto the scene as the world's best ultra runner. And that was with the Moab 240. So if you're interested, I would check out the Rogan podcast. But back to the conversation at hand. Courtney is really unique in the sense that she's very much a go by feel type athlete. She doesn't have a strict supplement routine. She doesn't have a strict workout routine. She doesn't have a strict diet. She has nachos and candy and beer. Like she's just a different level of athlete. But for some people, rather, for some people, I think this may seem weird. And they say it a couple times in the conversation, but it's be where your feet are. And I think, if anything, this is her secret sauce. For example, if she, maybe she is so good because she isn't projecting too far forward or backward in time. She's only making sure the next few moments are handled. And I think we can all learn from that. So even if you're not interested in ultra running, I think this podcast still could be a value for really anybody who lives in a stressful environment basically life. <laughs> so I hope you check this one out and see what you think of it. Moving on to worth reading. The first article I read this week is Texas is the future of America from the New York times. And I know this is going to trigger some people because of the title and it did capture my attention because it was clickbaity in that sense. So good on the titling, but also what kept me reading was that it wasn't just clickbait. In fact, it adds nuance onto the growth Texas has been seeing since 2010, not more recently. And it's not as one-sided as one may think. The people who are moving to Texas are the ones urbanizing it. It's not primarily the conservative population that one might expect. And the other aspect is that this tremendous growth could serve as a blueprint for other states to follow. But only time will tell, and one can hope that Texas doesn't become a victim of too much growth too quickly. So I'll leave that one for you. And I'd be actually really interested if you lived in Texas or what makes Texas attractive or really not attractive, because I think it's a really interesting state to be in considering how many headlines have associated to it right now. Personally, I find areas like Austin to be very interesting. Moving on to the second piece, and the title is The Myth and Magic of Generating New Ideas from The New Yorker. I'll start the discussion of this piece with a quote. For me, the quest for a breakthrough often requires getting myself into literal motion. One small step for Poincaré, but a whole sequence of steps for me. Like I take a long hike during which my mind has nothing to worry about except putting one foot in front of the other. Or I'll go on a long drive so that my primary focus is on the road. Maybe it's the endorphins, or maybe it's refocusing my attention on some other activity, which enables a new idea. Perhaps it is the momentary feeling of being untethered. Perhaps it is the momentary feeling of being untethered that gives the mind free reign, the space to have a good idea, unquote. And then this is not the first discussion I've had of eureka moments or refocusing or just having good ideas. And there's actually a podcast that's going to be coming out soon about creative processes and doing creative work, which I find similarly to having good ideas. I've even asked guests on the podcast how they recenter themselves when they drift or find themselves stuck. It's just one of these questions that I think everybody has their own way of doing it, that it's just very, very interesting. And even for me, right before I work on these feeding frenzies, I typically work out or play a video game called Satisfactory. And I find the act of either being physical, like riding or running, or light problem solving, like a puzzle game calms the usual chatter so you can tap into the idea generating aspects that lay beneath the surface. So if you have any ideas or thoughts on this subject, I'd really like to hear 
how you generate new ideas. Next up is worth watching. We have two videos today. The first one is Let Things Rock with Fungi with two Fs. So it's F-F-U-N-G-I. And I listened to Juliana Ferci, who helped to make this. It's part of her organization on the Tim Ferriss Show. And he recently came across this because of the recommendants. I really appreciated her descriptions of the fungi's purpose and what we can learn from them. The cycle of birth or life in the forest to death and decay, which the fungi are basically the shepherds of this process. They allow for matter to decompose to new soil so that new plants can regrow. And I think in this video, having the visual aids of seeing it and having her out in the field showing you gives you a different level of appreciation. And so if you're any interested in all aspects of fungi, you know that I've shared many different aspects here. I thought this was another aspect that I would like to share with people. And if you want to dive even deeper, I've also provided a link to the Tim Ferriss podcast with Juliana. If you have any interest in this field, you probably would enjoy listening to her even for someone who wants to understand ecology better as well. The next video is the world's first real electric truck from Jerry Rig Everything. And I shared Jerry's channel a few months back with the electric Hummer. And now he got hands-on with the Rivian R1T. And this vehicle is very, very cool. At first, I thought it was kind of silly seeing it <laughs> with its unique headlight design and things like that. But now seeing it in action and just what it's designed to do as more of an adventure truck, it's not just like a, a, a techie sports car. It's legitimately a outdoorsy EV. It really pushes the boundaries on what you can include in a vehicle and, and how you can leverage some of the new technology to adjust ride height and to give you different viewpoints with camera sensors and things like that. It's just really, really cool to see this level of innovation in something that's, it looks pretty much like a standard truck for the most part, but it seems to have thought about a lot. The EV space has started heating up for who's going to take the trunk crown, right? And who knows if Rivian's going to be the one that will capture that market share. We do have established brands like Ford and making the F-150 Lightning and you have Tesla and Hummer and so many others that have probably yet to announce their car or have their car announced, but not planning to release it until a couple of years from now. So it's going to be really interesting in the next couple of years to see what happens here. But I really like what Rivian has done here. I'm excited to, once I do have the opportunity to purchase an electric vehicle, the Rivian is definitely on my list if that seems like the right choice depending on what I'm doing and where I'm living. So I will leave it at that for now. And there's probably more to talk about with Rivian in general. And maybe I'll try to find uh, time to make a EV podcast because I think I'd like to talk about that right now with how many different things are going on in that space. If any of you have resources, thoughts, or other EV vehicles that I should look into, please don't hesitate to share them. As always, we will close with a quote. And I thought this one was worth sharing, just talking about Courtney in the intro as a podcast worth listening. This one is from Bill Belichick. Quote, talent sets the floor. Character sets the ceiling. That wraps up this week's Feeding Frenzy. I hope you all enjoyed or took something away that you're going to go explore in more detail. And as always, if you have any thoughts, opinions, or further reading slash listening or whatever format it may be in that I may explore these ideas in some way, I'd love to hear it from you. And as always, you can check out other content with Feeding Curiosity at feedingcuriosity.net. And you can find the podcast, the main podcast that is, at Feeding Curiosity, or you can also find these episodes of Feeding Frenzy as a podcast if you search Feeding Frenzy. So other than that, you can head to the website again and check out all the other things we're working on and see like our current ongoing breakdown of the TV show C, which I've been really enjoying and really enjoying talking about a show that I don't think has gotten enough love. I'm diverging. So in any case, 
I hope you'll enjoy listening once more time, and I will see you all in the next edition. <laughs>